A little basketball as we shift gears quickly. Ooh. Never lets me down, Greedy. How about this interesting soundbite from Scotty Pippen on the jump, talking about his feelings on the comparisons between Michael Jordan and LeBron James. Michael Jordan is the greatest player to ever put on shoes and play in our game. No doubt about it. Um, I'm always asked about questions to compare him to LeBron. I try to make the best of it. I've you try made, to make I've, the best of it. I try to make the best of it, but really, the comparison shouldn't ever be made. <laughs> okay. So what is that about? For for those uh, who don't understand, why everyone is laughing? Why was because that? Because what was it? Ten minutes ago, where Pippen was saying the opposite. Correct. The the teammate of one. Michael Jeffrey Jordan was yeah he so was now basically he's saying easy. LeBron was on Jordan's level if not better than and this was Michael within Jordan. the last couple. T Mac was <laughs> sipping that tea over there like huh okay so why, right. what, why the change of heart I don't understand what has happened here well the reality number one well sure but we all knew it when he said it the first time well initially when when you played with Michael Jordan you won six championships with him and you're an all-time great player unfortunately for Scotty to me. History doesn't do him justice, the great player that he was. As somebody that's been on the floor against both of those guys, Scottie Pippen deserves all of the accolades that he was given. The problem was he played with the greatest player to ever do it. And people labeled him something that you don't want to be labeled in sports. Robin. Psychic. So they dismissed yep. everything that he's gotten accomplished. So, so, so For so very long, every time the subject of Jordan came up, I'm pretty sure he got a little bitter about it. Rolled his eyes a little bit. And so now it's like, whatever. Yeah, LeBron got the spot. But now I think a dose of reality hit that he can't be around. out here in these streets saying That's... that anybody's better than Michael Jordan. I mean, better is a relative term. He's not better, but LeBron James is about as good as you can be. He's 33 years old. His, his career is still a work in progress. Sure. I, I think to just dismiss it out of hand doesn't make a lot of sense to me. That's like saying, well, no one could ever do anything to be greater than Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan was unbelievable. I was there to watch a lot of it firsthand. There's no question he deserves all of the, he deserves to consider the greatest player of all time. But LeBron James headed in that direction. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the jerks who's like, there's nothing anyone can do that's ever going to change. I, I am. There but why? Yeah. There's definitely a group of us that, are, I don't, I'm not saying I'm right. I mean, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I just this is how my brain is. I cannot wrap around that someone will ever be, in my mind, greater than Michael Jordan. When you have all-time level dominance like Michael Jordan had, and once he started winning championships, there was never a season that we felt like another team was the favorite. Right. Right now, LeBron's the best player in the league. But nobody's picking him to win the Yeah, but, that's, but, but during, I mean, in fairness, during Michael's career, the four other best players in the league didn't all decide to come together and form a super Fair. team. So if when Michael Jordan was at his best and he was going up against Carl Malone and John Stockton, if Charles Barkley had signed there and Patrick Ewing had signed there, Michael Jordan wouldn't have been the favorite. We just have in different good. times. And, and LeBron's a different kind of player. I'm not saying he's greater than Michael Jordan, but I, I, I think... To dismiss it out of hand doesn't make a lot of sense to me. He's done about whatever you could do. I, I think LeBron James has found his way into the top five of all-time conversation. But there's still a few other players to me that he has not surpassed, including Michael Jordan. Would you put LeBron James ahead of Magic Johnson at this point of his career and what he's accomplished? Awful close. See, that, see that's my point. So we, we're leaping so many different yeah, we players to put only. LeBron next to MJ, what about Kareem? What about Magic? What about Bill Russell? Like, to me, they deserve to be in that conversation and not necessarily leapfrog because we want to put LeBron next to MJ. Now, let me run around the league a little bit here. We've got a couple of other things to cover from the NBA. Thursday, you might recall, after a tough loss to the Pacers, Steve Kerr, coach of the Warriors, was very critical of his own team, saying caring in general was the main problem. Mm. Yesterday, he softened that and walked it back a little bit. Here's the coach. My main message is, like, we've got to defend, you know, we've got to get back to being a top five defensive team. I probably chose my words poorly in Indianapolis um, when I said they didn't care. Um, that didn't mean that they didn't care, you know what I mean? Like, what, what that meant to me was they didn't box out, uh, they didn't get the passing lanes, they didn't compete at a high level. But when you say somebody doesn't care, you know, that can be interpreted as uh, maybe you're questioning their character. I think uh, I think everybody knows how I feel about our guys. I love our guys, and they're an amazing group, and they're a championship group. So I probably chose my words poorly. Oh, 
You know what All that right, is, what's right? What's the psychology? That's then? when you go in the locker room and guys are actually grumbling about what you said to the media and, and they let you know about it. Like, well, you can't be going and say we didn't care. Like, we actually care. We're professionals. And, and no doubt about it. And so that, that, that was his public apology. But to that's healthy, team. right? That's is that great. exactly what you want to see? But, but here's the other thing that can't get overlooked. The Pacers are good, and they actually beat them. That's another thing that you have to determine as a coach. They didn't lose the game. They actually got beat. As a matter of fact, they've lost five of their last nine games. Like, this is a team that has been struggling. You're allowed to not care that much when you have been in the finals three straight years, won two championships, are expected to go back there. We're in the ultimate dog days of the NBA season. I don't think Steve Kerr had to apologize for anything. Do we think we're maybe being a little too sensitive with the, because like, for example, you could have a show or a day where you're just like, eh, I don't really care today. That doesn't mean you don't care about the big picture. So I feel like maybe somebody took it a little bit more sensitively than he intended. And I think it was Kevin Garnett, and I, think I mean, to pick up on your thought, because Kevin Garnett, Gar uh, excuse me, Kevin Garnett. I know, I was like, Kevin Garnett? Kevin Garnett <laughs> also, interestingly, was offended by this. Um, <laughs> Which but, is the shocking part But obviously, part of the whole I mean, thing. Kevin Durant, who, who immediately in the locker room afterwards seems to have taken umbrage to that, yeah. as he seems to take umbrage to a lot of things. I'm surprised he didn't start a new Check Twitter account to criticize Steve Kerr. <laughs> <laughs> he I, I, might I, have. I, I shouldn't joke around about that, because at the end of the day, the coach is allowed to say, guys, you played like you didn't care out there, right? I mean, in football, the coach will say, you look like you didn't care out there. And if you lose by 20 points to Indiana and you're the Warriors, then you probably didn't play like you cared that Brittany, much. Brittany, it's a, it's, a, it's a fine line you're walking. Because when, when I hear you don't care, so that's you're, you're assaulting, you're coming at my, my professionalism. I, I guarantee each guy in that locker room is huh. like, when I step on that court, I'm, I, I'm bringing it. I'm coming, I'm coming with it. Yeah, well, there are things that they could have done better. Absolutely, but when you come in, when you come in, another grown man said you did, you don't care. Wow, that's interesting. that's like. And, and Greeny, you answered your own statement by talking about them earning the opportunity to be in the dog days as a number two seed locked in. They're the defending world champions in that locker room. Yeah. So, but I that's, think that, that's the squad that you're discussing. But I think one thing that Coach Kerr is kind of speaking to his team about is complacency. You spoke, you spoke about it. You talked about how they're, you know, they've been, they've won championships and they've got all these accolades. Well, sometimes, especially at this point in the season, man, you just like, you, you just, you're just throttling it down when you need to ratchet up going into the postseason. Cause like we always talk about, momentum is so crucial going into the postseason. And for whatever it's worth, they're just four and five since Steph Curry got hurt. So maybe that is a bigger concern than anything else. All right. It's a fabulous final week of the NBA.